You should open the, <laughs> open the door again. <laughs> That's why I'm sure it wasn't you. <laughs> it wasn't. Last time aboard Freedom, Sean and I left Seattle behind and headed north to Langley, a great little town on Whidbey Island. Being the largest island in Washington state, there was certainly no shortage of interesting and quirky things to see, like the oldest ferry in Washington state, currently decommissioned and docked here for repairs, a public kissing station, a payphone with a direct line to Santa, and a thriving population of floppy-eared bunnies that have had their fair share of controversy with people here on the island. If you missed it, be sure to check it out. Now we're once again back on the water en route to Laconer, 30 nautical miles northeast of Langley, up the Swinomish Channel. Although our furthest destination north on this trip is only about 90 nautical miles from our home port, we decided to make some stops along the way to break up the monotony of being at the helm all day going seven knots. With daylight hours being limited, lots of debris in the water to be on the lookout for, and us having a little more time than usual right now, we figured we'd enjoy shorter cruising days and the many unique and special places in the Puget Sound region. No, I know, this is sketchy. Oh boy. So is this about the area you're gonna let me off? Okay. Okay. Even with a long and wide open dock, docking Freedom isn't so easy with a current ripping through the channel and the wind gusts that picked up just in time for our arrival. Now would be another good time to have a stern thruster. get any cuter you know it's time to get out of your jammies I think we're gonna go into town oh my gosh you look so cute <laughs> would you like to share where we are well we started our journey in the Seattle area really our marina, marina is just north of the city Where do we go from there? We started our journey on Sunday, uh, leaving our marina and coming up the east side of Ruby Island to a town called Langley. We spent two nights in lovely Langley before continuing our voyage further north. We came up through the Saratoga Passage to Skagit Bay and we came into the Swinomish Channel. We are now in a town called Laconner. Why, thank you. Tomorrow we leave, we go further north and we go right off the, right off the edge of Earth, right off the end of the mountain. <laughs> Completely uncharted up there, so wish us luck. <laughs> it's a little breezy today, but it's a lot warmer, so it's a nice, nice day to walk into town, see what's new here in Laconner. And a fun fact about Laconner is it's where the American tugboats are built. Not right here, but somewhere inland. Um, back in the day when we were interested in Americans, we almost took a tour, but then we found freedom. So. If you're into American tugs, LaConnor is the place to come. And I think there's one for sale over on the water. Four knots up. Yeah. It's like a 39 perhaps? 39, that was I think one that we were looking at. Actually I think they call it a 395. I think it's a 5, something like that. Oh. That's, the, that's the longest that they make oh, them? No, or no, they go to the, 40s. Uh, upper 40s I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
get a lot for your money with American Tugs. You can buy a brand new one for relatively not that much money. Nowadays, everything's expensive. That's true. This is back in the day, so I scratched that. Nowadays, the whole world is definitely more expensive, so. But such a cute town. So much debris in this river. It's kind of crazy. That is debris that came down the river, came into here, and is now there. So those are the crab pots. We've got more crab pots over there across the channel. Those are the crab pots that we run into all the time. Well, that one time, which was a bad one, which was just over there. Damn crab pots. Besides all the crab pots, Lacanar is yet another great small waterfront town that gives cruisers one more reason to love the Pacific Northwest. This is the center of town, or what the locals call the Hill. It's also a historic district located on the National Register of Historic Places. FYI for all of you history buffs out there. is only a half square mile in size, but it's packed with everything one could possibly want. Gift shops, wine tasting, art galleries, restaurants, prime rib, coffee, you name it, you can even sing with Santa. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open play. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow, you got it. <laughs> you can read. Wow. <laughs> that took me a while too. I was like, boop, 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 boop. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's like a mall. I know. Isn't that cool? So there's definitely no shortage of gift shops. Ladies. Were you waving at the ladies? Uh, yeah, I was go Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's so nice of you. Have a good day. Merry you Christmas. too. My goodness, guys. Did she get a big one? So, can I get it and steal it? Yeah, steal it, so. Come on, go get it, so. Go get it. Go get it, so. Come on. Oh, so close. Just a backseat driver, so. After checking out the hill, we drop the kids off at the boat to grab a beer and literally the world's best pub fries at La Connor Brewery. Did you think pub fries would look like that? Pretty excessive amount of fries. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little side of fries. By far the coolest place in Laconner is Nasty Jack's Antiques. We've never seen so many random throwbacks in our life. If you're in the market for collectibles, maybe an old issue of Life magazine, you've got to check this place out if you find yourself in Laconner. <laughs> what exactly is that? It's pop gun. Pump action. Pop. Like a wine glass. <laughs> if you're in antiques, that is the coolest store I've ever been into. I'm not an antiquer. Are you an antiquer? No. No. Not at all, but it's cool. That's the coolest store. If you come to LaConnor, you have to check it out. You should open the, <laughs> open the door again. <laughs> <laughs> That's why 
wasn't you. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> such a two-year-old. Alright, I'm going to start planning our route for tomorrow to go to Semiamu from La Conner. Um, so I'm just going to pop into Coastal Explorer and start dropping waypoints and build her out. And then I'm going to go all the way to the end and put a waypoint where we're going. And then I'm going to place a bunch of points in between to create a route that gives us a safe passage. So there's our straight line course, this blue line from where we are to where we're going. And now I'm just going to start placing waypoints on the route. I'll get it roughed in and then we'll go over the entire route in a little bit more detail to make sure everything's through deep enough water and a safe passage. So now I'm just refining the route just uh, in the area of the channel trying to put us in the middle of the channel as much as possible I'll also come back and change there's these circles around each waypoint when the boat intersects the beginning of the circle is when it makes its turn um, so these circles are pretty large in relationship to the channel size so I'll shorten them up otherwise we'll start our turn too early and we may start cutting across shallow areas of the channel so for example this circle here as soon as it gets to this point the boat will start changing course to this heading uh, to get to the next waypoint so I can take these diameters and I can bring them way down. As soon as we enter the circle the autopilot would be prompted to follow the heading for the next segment of the route to get to the next waypoint so it'll start making the turn and this is a railroad swing bridge so if it you know cuts the corner too much you know you could put the boat in, in danger so by tightening this up it forces the boat to stay on that route segment longer until it transitions to the next segment. So you just get a tighter uh, route adherence, I guess, given its course to steer from your chart plotter. All right, so now we got the route um, all set. It looks like it's 40, uh, 40 and a half miles. So 40.5 nautical miles. I am just gonna change the uh, name of our route Connor to Semiyama. Then I'm going to start calculating how long it's going to take and determine uh, when we want to arrive. So I believe there can be some current. This is a little bit of a tricky situation. There's current where we're at in the Connor on the Swinomish Channel. Um, there's also current at the Semiyama Marina, at least according to Active Captain. So since we haven't been to that marina before, it would probably be best that we time our arrival uh, during slack when the water isn't moving so much through the marina. It'll make docking easier. Um, here, like I said, there is current, but we're along this long face dock, so we have a lot more room. We know what the conditions are like here. I think it'll be a little bit easier for us to get off of a dock in current rather than arrive at a dock, uh, at an unfamiliar dock in current. So we're gonna time our arrival with uh, slack tide in the afternoon at Semiyamu. So I'm going to check. There's no uh, current stations in that area, but there is a tide station somewhat close, this Cherry Point tide station. And if I scroll over to tomorrow, um, you'll see at high tide is in the morning around uh, a quarter after nine or so. Then it comes down to not low tide, but a mid tide, and it starts to raise up a little bit before dropping off. So. The good news is, um, since the tide isn't steeply rising, the water should be pretty slack a good majority of the afternoon. So if we arrive really anywhere, um, anywhere between 2.30 and about 5.30, I think we'll be in, in good shape. So that actually helps us out quite a bit. It gives us some wiggle room. Uh, so I'm gonna click on the route and just uh, find out what time we would have to leave if we wanted to get there at about 3.30. Right now it's in the winter, so uh, we don't get a whole lot of daylight. It's usually dark here by four, so I would like to get there before sundown. So if I go into the details of my route, 
um, and I click on this departure time where it says it's not set, I'm going to change this and I want to calculate from arrival time uh, when, we, when we want to arrive there. So we are going to arrive there tomorrow. I'm going to click on tomorrow's date. Let's first try 3 o'clock. And it's saying we need to leave at 9.12 a.m. based on the speed that's set in here. So if I click on set speed, right now it's set on 7 knots. Um, I think 7 knots is probably appropriate. Uh, maybe I'll just scale this down in case we have some current in the Sonomish channel. So I'll do 6 and 3 quarters. And it's telling us to leave at 8.59 a.m. So it'll take a little bit to unwrap the short power and get the engine started. So we'll probably get things warmed up uh, at about 8.30 and try to get off the dock by 9. Cool. And that's uh, route planning. Mm -hmm. Six hours in total, 50, I'm sorry, 40 nautical miles. Not bad. Got a little bit of current. But I think we'll get out of here, all right? What's the plan? I'm gonna, take, we... I'm gonna take the wreath down. Uh, then I'll start disconnecting the power cables, and then uh, and then we'll talk about the plan and how we take the lines off because that'll be very important today. That we take them off in sequence. Do you think you're gonna flip the boat around? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna let the current kind of take us off the dock, and we'll spin around and shoot north. Cool. With the current against the bow, I want to make sure the forward spring line is the last line removed since this will restrain the boat from moving backwards from the current. Not knowing if we have any side current, the stern line is equally important to ensure the boat remains parallel to the dock so the bow doesn't drift into the dock. My wireless bow thruster control allows me to keep the boat parallel to the dock once the stern line is off and I'm making my way to the helm. Freedom is a big lady, weighing in at a whopping 30 tons or 60,000 pounds, and she's our home. So if we're not overly cautious and always ready with the plan, leaving a dock with a strong current can very quickly turn what should be a good day on the water into a nightmare. decided to die down just the day that we wanted to leave. Um, with only bow thrusters I get a little nervous because the current can take you and do some pretty scary things. It's good that we're underway headed northbound to our Christmas destination. We are headed to Semiamu Marina and the resort. Well it's actually the marina not tied to the resort but I think we're gonna be able to get into the resort and enjoy some of their amenities. Yeah it's a good day for cruising. Yeah. It's beautiful out. Great day. Beautiful some day. Blue, but yet some clouds. Light wind, cold, not too bad for winter cruising. Warm in here. Yeah, warm in here. Despite the fact we have our yeah. hats on. <laughs> Once these hats go on, they don't come off. <laughs> Hat hair, I <eye> care. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool. How ETA will be there at two o'clock? Uh, five, about five and a half hours? Probably three. We'll slow down a little bit after we get out of the channel. We're getting a nice little, little, boost. little river rafting. Seven. Seven nuts. Yeah, 7.8 knots. We'll be there about six hours. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss our Arctic trip to Semiamu. It was a bit more than we bargained for, but we made the best of it. We'll see you next time.